also yelled, and I'll see what that is. It was originally published on Power and Kippy, a second question thing. Life jackets can be found in the white box behind the pilot house, as well as the two white boxes. And now the Wrigley building. It was originally built for the Wrigley Chewing Gum Company. Got a fun fact and then a question for your chewing gum company. Now on the right, you'll see the same architectural style of the London Blood to Guarantee an Accident building. Designed by Alfred Alshuber in 1924, it's again, it's called French Beaux Arts. An ornate bottom, a stack of plank floors, and an ornate the top. Now we're going to move back over to the left hand side, I promise everyone I am going to talk about stuff on the right for most of the tour. But on the left hand side of the Get Out the Bridge, you're going to see the Tribune Tower. Now the Tribune Tower was the result of a 1922 contest hosted by the Chicago Tribune newspaper to design the world's most fastest news. Most of the people in Chicago in the 1920s, they were so mad in that building one, they probably looked too old, they wanted something more modern. The more Art Deco style is really what they wanted. A good example of that's right across the river from the Tribune Tower. It's behind us. It's the center. And it's gone by a few other names. The Standard Oil Building, Big Stands, one of my favorite ones that's gone by. Also, the $80 million mistake. The reason I tell that is that Werner L. Scott, the architect who designed that building, originally cleared the building in fine white Italian Carrara marble. That's the finest marble you can get your hands on. Now, raise your hands. Who's been to Chicago in the wintertime, like January and February? Now, if you have, you know it gets rough, I'm rough in your 1800s. Now, as he was becoming an architect, all the architects around him, they were cutting their buildings with a lot of fancy parts, so many ornamentation. And all this ornamentation was beautiful, but it cost money. So, technically, it was unnecessary to cancel the function of the building. These fans are revolutionized. The entire world of architecture with one phrase, less is more. We are all that unnecessary stuff, focused on the function of the building, not just the outside of it. So, to put this work really into perspective, look at this black box building here. Not much to There's say no about parking. the building physically, right? But before we stay in roll, no building in the world will look like that building. building also. That's a weird thing to hear, because it's been in the modern city in the U.S. Yeah. Yeah. Building so, looks like that building. It's a plain rectangular steel box. It's called the International Style of Architecture. Basically, it's part of the modern and standard architecture. Now, he did part of these videos for years. He's a teacher. And he taught all architects this whole list of some of the And I'm pretty sure one of his students disagreed with him, though, because that guy's name was Bertrand Goldberg. And he designed these two buildings right next to us. The Corn Commons has been available in Chicago for obvious reasons. The actual name of them is Marina City Towers, built in 1964 by Bertrand Goldberg in an effort to attract middle class workers downtown to live. Because folks, back in the day, nobody wanted to live downtown Chicago. Most people just worked down here. So Bertrand is like used to building. It's like a city inside of a city. On the inside, there was a roller rink, a grocery store, a doctor's office, a movie theater, a bowling alley. Basically, every accommodation you need to live downtown. And the current questions I get about those two buildings. One, what are the apartments look like on the inside? I have a answer for you. A slice of pie. Enter the point in, close out into the balcony, and you have a common question I get. Has anybody ever driven off the parking lot before? Yeah, twice. But it was for a movie and an advertisement, nobody got hurt. The movie was Steve McQueen's second to last film, The Hunter, the drove her all the way off the building. And you see the time to the Allstate Insurance Company, and the 2000s, the middle park halfway off the building. One car on the side of the building for Allstate billboard underneath that, so we're showing the worst case scenario for people in Chicago for their insurance company. Now, right past the bridge, you can see a shorter red brick building called the Reaper Rock Center, that was in 1914 by George Dennis. We're going to play a game with this building. I'm going to give you guys three seconds to look all around this building, and I'm going to ask you what's weird about it. Now, if you already know the answer, don't say anything until the end of those three seconds. No spoilers now. Also, I'm going to give you guys a hint. It's not that the building is made of bricks. Are y'all ready? Three seconds and go. Three, two, one. Can anybody tell me what is weird about the building? Yell, yell it out. The building is not always asymmetrical. Now, right next to us, we have 300 North LaSalle, designed by Picard and Shelton in 2009. This is one of the most environmentally friendly buildings in Chicago. It was built with over 60% recycled materials. And would you guys believe me if I told you? No air conditioning units in that building. No one is suffering in there during the summertime. The way they cool the building off is using the river water. They pump it in through the walls, pump it out cleaner than ash already was. But I live in the Chicago River. Now, what the heck is that? I'm a commercial field company that all of these meetings into one. Now, if you're thinking 18 warehouses in one building, that'd be a ridiculously giant building. Well, look to the right, you'd be correct. The building was built in 1931 by Graham Anderson, Prince and White. Now this building was first built, it was the largest concrete building in the country by square feet. 
Today's only number two. Does anybody know what number one is now? Really big hint? Government building? Like the government building? The Pentagon. Now the Merchandise Mart has over 4.2 million square feet of space, over 8 miles of hallway in that building, and until the 90s, that building had its own zip code. Now, the Kennedy family purchased the Merchandise Mart in the 1940s for just $13 million. They only had to pay back taxes on the property. Then they sold that building in the 90s for $576 million. So if you're worried about the Kennedy family's financial situation, why? Because they also purchased this land right here. This outcropping of land is called Wolf Point, and it's very historically significant to Chicago. This land is where the first non-native visitors, their names were Marquette, and oh. quit referring to the land as Chicago, oh. telling them the crop that grew on the land, and medicinal onion that had a very strong fragrance to it, that is what Chicago means. Folks, Chicago roughly translates into smelly onion. That is true. So take that, New York. You can be called the Big Apple all day long, but we're the smelly onions full on for Chicago. If somebody notices this building, and they want somebody else to notice it, they will munch it into one of three things. Something like this? Huh? What? Something like this? Who? Huh? Who? Huh? Something like this. These in love, a little pinch. Look at the bottom of the building. Your eyes are not deceiving you. It's built on the 40 foot base and was out there to land. Now, my favorite thing about this building, I'm going to show you guys. As we get up from this bridge here, look up at these slanting glass we're going to be going underneath. If you look up at the slanted glass, you're going to see the full reflection of our boat in the glass right here, and I can actually wave to you guys. Hi! Now, the way this building is possible, you guys see these thick gray lines, these eight silver I-beams going up this side of the building. Those I-beams are made of the world's strongest steel that's developed in Luxembourg. They go all the way up the side of the building and all the way down to the bedrock underground. Also, at the very top of the building, on the inside, you cannot see this thing, there are four giant teams that are lined with granite. It cost $80 million to reclimb the building, about half as much as it cost to tell. It is no longer the tallest building in the world designed by a lead female architect. I know it's a bummer. <laughs> Just kidding, folks. It's not a bummer. Because Jeannie Gang went wild this past year and broke her own record for this person in Chicago real estate. Or really, if you're looking for a penthouse apartment to lease in Chicago right now, the penthouse is currently for lease. That's a monthly payment. That's rent. Would anybody like to guess the rent on that penthouse apartment? Yell it out, monthly payment. So I've heard like $20,000, $10,000, $250,000. You may have been able to go there because it's only $37,000 a month. Nice, yeah. It's a four bedroom, four bathroom apartment with a 6.6 foreign illness. So they developed a group called the Illinois Metropolitan Water Reclamation District to reclaim the water to solve this problem. Now I'm sure at the first meeting of this group of people, the quiet guy said something like, Hey guys, we could just stop going trash into the river. And then the loud guy piped up. That's where it's the club. His idea is kind of cool. And this is the way they did it. They dug a 26 mile long canal. River to be dead. All those court cases were also held in Chicago. Now, St. Louis, they did get back at us. They actually bottled up all that dirty water we sent away. They sold it back to us, and we still drink this stuff to this day. We just call it Budweiser. Yeah. <laughs> Take that million dollar beer corporation, Zach, the tour guide's coming. I said I'm talking about 43 of the 45 minutes. That's because right now I'm going to pause the narration for about two minutes as we're turning around here, two to three minutes. And I'll be getting back on the mic as we are fully turned around. I will start talking about Navy beer. But during this time, so that's the not not the number one visited tourist attraction. That is actually the it's docked against it. It's docked against Millennium Park. Millennium Park is the number one visited tourist attraction in the state. That's where the Art Institute is. Of course, it's Spinner with three lobes. That's called a three lobe construction style. And what that he's named like three or four times. He's designed a lot of buildings in downtown Chicago. But funny enough, he's not a, a Chicago based architect. He was based in New York City. He loved New York City, and the reason I mention that is because he liked to add a little bit of New York City flair onto his building. Uh -huh. A 17 person jacuzzi and four giant aquariums. Each large enough to accommodate a shark, so you get a lot more bang for your buck with that building. Now, ahead of us on the right, you're going to see a light tan building with a rounded 15 days, about two weeks. Is it harmful to the wildlife? No, the active ingredient in this diet is called fluorescein. And if you've ever had eye surgery done, you probably in Jenner's show was filmed there from 1994 to 2009. And if you don't know anything about that, that TV show, just know it's another thing that we're really proud of, right? Ding ding, rest in peace, Jerry. Now, right next to us, you'll see that shorter building called, with actually the, with the green glass side to it. That's the University of Chicago's Gleacher Center, designed by Dirk Lohan in 2008. Dirk Lohan caused some controversy for that building, for what he did to the classrooms. If you look behind the boat right now, you'll see where the classrooms are. Now, though, they all know it. They see it with, like a point of pride. Again, 90 Nobel Prize winners totally understand. Now, right next to us, you're going to our hotel and tower, designed by Adrian Smith in 2009. Adrian Smith, let's talk about them. 
He is a world-famous Chicago local architect. Now he's world-famous, not for designing this building. He is more world-famous for designing a building that is not in the U.S.